guest who did a fabulous session not long ago. Leticia from Yonder is here with us. And we're going to be talking about amplifying your customer word of mouth. So a super important uh, aspect of your business is that referral um, that happens from people enjoying your products or enjoying your services and going out there and telling all your all their friends. So you get heaps of new business. So welcome, 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 Atamarie, everyone, to this Digital Boost session. They do occur Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. So book us in with your morning tea um, and get your questions answered by the experts. That's why we're here. And seriously, make these sessions work for you by popping your questions in the comment section, the Q&A section, or the chat features, depending on what platform you're streaming from. We want to hear feedback from you, comments, questions. Leticia is going to take questions throughout. So um, that's a really awesome thing. And yeah, just as a reminder, we have a competition. If you didn't know about it, you could win a Boost My Office, a MacBook Pro, a desk, a screen, and a package from zero. And the whole thing is about $4,000 worth of value. Uh, hello, you need to sign up. And you can do that by going onto the Digital Boost site. Once you log in, you'll see it right there on the main dashboard. Click sign up for Boost My Office, and you're going to enter to draw there. You can also earn additional points by sharing it out. So the more points, um, the more likelihood you will be to be a winner. There'll be two winners, and the competition ends the 11th of October. So get your name in there. You deserve it. Um, Leticia, thanks for joining us again today. We had a fabulous session with you last time. I learned so much. Hey, morning. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. And we, um, we, yeah, we got some good feedback after it as well. So hopefully it helps some of the businesses out there. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm going to jump and let you take over and <laughs> okay. um, I'll make sure everything's running in the back. Awesome. Yeah. And fire, yeah, fire through any questions that come up. So yeah. don't be afraid to ask questions, guys, as I go through. I've, yeah, um, awesome. We love that. We love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It means you don't have to listen to me all the time either. Uh, so thanks. Thanks for having me again, guys. Um, today, we're just going to um, dive into how to amplify your customer word of mouth. And um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on it. Um, but first of all, I was going to look at the, I'm just going to see if my screen's going to go to the next one, <laughs> is um, we're going to dive into it and start with why. We're going to um, look at a little bit of why your customer word of mouth. Um, how we amplify it. I'm going to give you some um, things that you can actually take away and do with your business. Um, and then we're going to look at how you actually measure it and make sure that it is doing what you want it to do and, and that it's working. And if it's not working, what do you need to tweak to make sure that it is working? Um, and so I think that's actually, for me, that's the fundamental of it um, because if you think you're amplifying it, but then in actual fact, you're not measuring it, how do you know if it's working? Um, so for me, that is key today. Uh, so before I dive in, for those of you who didn't see me last time, I thought I'd just do my little spiel to see, tell you who I am again. Uh, my name's Leticia. I live in Taranaki in New Zealand. And um, pre-COVID, I worked from home. So I've just continued to work from home for the last 18 months. So it's been, I'm being a bit lucky for that. Um, I'm one of the founders and owners of a software business called Yonder HQ. Um, at Yonder, my role involves sales as well as being involved in marketing and customer success management. Um, now, if you're wondering what Yonder does, I'm going to give you a little spiel on that as well. Um, quick overview, no sales, don't worry. But um, Yonder is a, basically a marketing platform. And it has a number of features to help businesses to boost online conversions, gather and use customer feedback and reviews, all with the aim of improving sales and marketing. So some of the features we have on the Yonder platform include live chat widgets, AI chatbots, customer quizzes, customer survey and review request tools. Um, and these tools all combine to help our customers achieve up to about a 20% increase in website conversions and leads, and also allows them to gather about 10 times more customer feedback than what they could get, they just don't gather it in general, or four times more Google reviews. So um, the software is helping a range of businesses to do this. We're very focused on creating software 
that utilizes technology to allow business to work smarter and not harder. And I think that's what all this digital boost um, is about, really, which is making sure that you've got things in place or technology in place that helps your business to grow. Um, and it makes you gives you a little bit of time as well as, a, as an owner operator. Um, so we have lots of businesses that we're um, that have used Yonder that have been able to throw away the Excel spreadsheets where they usually input all their customer feedback and reviews and analyze it themselves because we actually automate that for them and do it for them. So we've saved them hours of time per month. Um, we've had some call centers that have dropped from 13 down to three customer service staff because the chatbot's been able to answer all their questions immediately. So there's lots of time saving when you put automation in the correct positions or places in your business. Um, the main industry that Yonder services um, is tourism for us, such as accommodation, attractions, and activity providers. Um, if you've ever visited Hobbiton movie set, you may have interacted with our chatbot, Sam. If not, go and play with them. Um, and if you've received, you might have received a customer feedback survey that's powered by Yonder as well, if you'd visited Hobbiton. Um, if you haven't done it, I highly recommend going to see them. And um, their banquet tours are amazing. Very magical experience. Um, other industries that Yonder has been built for and we work with is personal services, such as hairdressers and beauty salons, and professional services, such as lawyers and accountants. Um, we also work with trades such as plumbers and electricians, and we also work with a bunch of marketing agencies who use our software when they build websites for their clients. Um, so that's just a little roundup of what I do and what my company does so that you sort of know where I'm talking from when I, when I go into this for things. So um, we're now going to sort of dive into... Um, why word of mouth works basically so why it's so important for you this day and age um, and I just wanted to touch on some stats really that are really important that they, they haven't come from us they've come from really well researched companies which says that 90% of your customers believe recommendations from friends and family over all forms of advertising now, we're constantly bombarded these days with different forms of advertising, and it basically comes down to trust. So people generally trust their friends and family the most, especially when they consider that a lot of the advertising now, they think they're getting tricked into marketing marketing ploys. So it's, um, it's, just, a, it's just a trust thing, and people trust their family and friends. Um, from a digital uh, word of mouth perspective, it's been proven that online reviews influence the purchasing decision for up to 93% of consumers. So again, it comes down to a little bit of trust. They're going to people's word of mouth versus just the marketing material they're seeing. Or it might be marketing material that draws them in, but then they need reassurance from the word of mouth. Um, so Google has also said that 74% of consumers identify word of mouth as a key influencer in their purchasing decisions. And I thought I might just um, touch on some examples of this happening um, so that you can just, just sort of jog in your memory. It might give you some ideas, but it also might just make you think, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what actually happens. So um, the first example I'm going to give you is actually a hairdresser's. So um, you go to the hairdressers and you usually spend, well, I don't know for females, fem us females out there, we usually spend a, free, a reasonable amount of money on our hair uh, and we want it to look good. But what happens when it doesn't look good and you feel, you don't feel good and you walk out? Well, other than going back and demanding that they fix your hair, what else do you actually do? And what a lot of people do is they tell their friends and family and you tell everyone you know. And the conversation goes a little bit like this. Oh my gosh, I got my hair done the other day. I am never going back to there again. And you will name the business that you've been to. From here, there's usually a big discussion on what went wrong, what the business did to solve the problem. And within this conversation, the business name's mentioned multiple times and none of it's really good. So your friends and family will remember never to go to that hairdressing salon again. So that's an example of a word of mouth. It's a negative example of word of mouth. But the reversal can also happen. But often it happens, it actually happens less often unless a business is actually pushing that forward or reminding businesses about their positives and what they can say to business or their friends and family that's actually really good about their business. Um, another example I wanted to share, just an amazing example of word of mouth, is the um, word of mouth campaign that Coca-Cola did actually a few summers ago. They did a share a Coca-Cola campaign. 
And this was basically a word of mouth campaign that got people talking um, as Coke, because Coke put their names on the Coke labels. Um, so hundreds of thousands of people shared their Coke bottles online via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But keep in mind this, that it wasn't the flavour of the Coke that they were actually sharing. It was actually all to do with the packaging and the look and feel of the Coke and how that made them feel. So I just thought that um, that was a really good reminder for you guys. The two examples that I've just given you guys, though, are all about the customer's word of mouth. But in today's era, in today's digital world, um, it's spread even more quickly. And Coke's a really good example of how it went all over social media. And online review sites are also really important for digital word of mouth. So as a business, you need to be growing and amplifying your customer's digital word of mouth as well as still the old fashioned person to person word of mouth. So I'm not discarding that at all, but you just need to be aware that the, you're actually playing the two, the two sides of it. Um, I have some platforms here that you guys have probably all heard of, um, but make sure that you are on one, like you're on Google, you have to be on Google and we're gonna dive into that a bit further. But um, there's also usually ones for nearly every single product or service that you do. Um, the Rate My Agent one is for real estate agents. The open table one, if you weren't aware, is, from, is for restaurants. Um, Yelp is more of a general one, not used so much in New Zealand at the moment, but internationally it is. So if you sell your products internationally, do consider it. Um, but they're all, and, and everyone knows what TripAdvisor is. Facebook is Facebook recommendations, by the way. Um, so, so this is why that some people use and, and word of mouth is being seen digitally as well. Um, so just that's just a little bit of why you should um, worry about word of mouth. Um, I had some really other good examples, but they were a little bit, some of them were a little bit gross because they were all negative and I didn't want to share the negative. So <laughs> I thought I'd just stop there. So I'm just going to go on to how we're going to amplify it and how are you going to amplify it so that it actually grows your business, your sales and marketing. Um, because, and then I'm going to, and I am going to touch on that further on when we go into how you actually um, measure it. So I touched on it before uh, when I showed you all the review sites. But if I can give you one really big push, and I know that you have had Google, I'm sure Anna Marie's set up Google and you've, you've talked to Google on this, but um, to make sure that you have got your customer's word of mouth in your Google reviews site. So these are visible, and, and the importance of Google is because it's visible in multiple places where people search. So if you think um, Google Maps or your website listing, then they always are showing up your reviews as well. Um, and they have a role to play in your organic search results. So as well as like promoting your customer word of mouth, it's actually helping your marketing and your sales a lot as well. So drive people to your Google review page and ask them to review you. Um, my last session that I did with you guys was all about how to actually gather more customer feedback and reviews. So definitely go back to that one if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll actually go back once I drop off and I'll find that link for you guys. Oh. So you have it. Um, so just there's just a kind of a comment question here and it says, aren't digital recommendations um, a bit sus because they can be manipulated? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that is a really, and it's really interesting one because th there's a level of trust in that. And so that's why family family and friends recommendation is still the number one recommendation mm. because of that trust factor. Um, but the likes of, and TripAdvisor's had this issue where they've had um, trust issues with some of their data. And then businesses also have it too because, um, and Google is a prime example of sometimes they will ping someone to ask them for a review only because they've driven past the location and they haven't actually gone in and visited. Mm. But um, it's about the businesses being able to manage their reviews as well. So making sure that you actually, like giving, the, this is a really good example that I've got on the screen now, these images of the person there and, and doing it. So mm. yeah, there is a definitely a trust, trust issue, but the majority of people these days that's how they get their trust is, is through those review sites. And, and so I, would you say also, Letitia, that it's kind of um, like it's how you handle those negative reviews that also creates that um, persona of who you are as a business? 
Definitely. So we actually, we've done quite a bit of um, talking to customers and we wrote an article, I should share it with you guys, because it's really interesting, about um, a hotelier that he loves negative feedback. It's like he said, because he said it, it tells him, it actually gives him things to work with in his business. And mm. it, 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 you can't see it as negative. He said he replies to every single piece of feedback, good and bad. Mm. But the bad stuff, it's how you, yeah, it shows you how you engage with your customers on mm. that level. So it's really important. Um, and I'll go into like one of the things I go into next is that you need to put cut testimonials on your website. Mm. And I had someone say to me the other day, oh, um, but I only want good ones on my website, like really good ones. And I'm like, how, like, yeah, there is a level that you don't want the real bad ones on there. But yeah. if you only show five-star reviews, yeah. what are people going to think? Like, is there yeah. going to be a trust level there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it is a really interesting one, guys, the trust one. Um, if you are going to use uh, an, an online platform, um, Google has quite a high level of trust with people. Um, we, we, don't, we don't understand why TripAdvisor's um, got a high level for tourism, but some people are quite sceptical of it now, especially New Zealanders, interestingly, compared to international tourists. So there is a little bit of difference in your consumers as well. So make sure you understand your consumers and where they're going to. Facebook's quite an interesting one because it tends to be that if you've got friends that have recommended things, then that comes up. And so it's got that maybe that little bit of extra social trust. Um, so yeah, I was going to dive into actually the next place, which I touched on, which is um, another way that you guys can amplify your customers' word of mouth, which is to showcase their reviews and testimonials on your website. Um, now, it's considered um, that, and I've, I've said it before, that 94% of consumers believe recommendations from friends and family, um, and that equates, it equates to online reviews too, I'm afraid, guys, and they need to be on your website. Um, for an example, this is a tourism um, website, and, and this is their homepage, and they've put the, they've listed their three pro sort of products or main products up here. I didn't, couldn't show the whole page, sorry. But they've actually got their reviews immediately after their products um, that they've listed as for sale. So it does come down a little bit to where you put your reviews on your website. So I'm going to show you another example here. Um, this is of a hairdressing salon. So in this hairdressing salon example, they've put it under their book now, book online button, um, which is about halfway down their page. They did some examples of what they are doing. You can go onto their site, Cleaver and Rouge, and, um, and then they go down a little bit and it's request an appointment, book online, and then it's your reviews. Um, again, they can scroll through their reviews so that they can see what, what people are saying. Make sure, a little tip for your reviews, make sure they've got a name if you can. Again, that comes down to trust. Anonymous ones aren't very effective because there's that lacking of trust in them. Um, and then the time so that they can see that they're really new. Um, another example that I pulled up and is from a beauty or an online e-commerce store because I know that there's a few, um, there's quite a few e-commerce stores on here today that tune in. Um, and if you pay note, they've, they've, these guys have actually put their star rating and their reviews right under their price. <laughs> um, but interestingly enough, they've also asking people here to write a review, um, which is which is kind of interesting. And again, that could be a, there's some some review platforms ask that if they do write a review, that it has to actually be approved by admin as well to make sure that they've purchased the product. Um, so yeah, there's different ways and places that you can put your reviews on your um, website pages. If I um, go back to like these are on the product pages and then there's home pages. Don't just limit it to one page of your website. Okay, make sure that it is can be seen in multiple different places and be as specific as possible. So this is a review for this product. Um, if you're on a tourism site, make sure it's a review for that product. As well as the business overall, you can have product-specific reviews, which make a big difference and increase that level of trust. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep going back, back to that, I'm afraid. Um, so another place that you can use, um, yep. 
Go your questions. Go. So I'm just going to shoot them at you. Okay. Oh, yeah, go. Um, one that says, I recently received an email from my vet asking for a review after a visit. They yep. used a heat type map one through 10, but I didn't reply and forgot. I never received a reminder. Do you think it's okay to send a second follow-up one or not if they don't, um, if they don't do the review? Mm. So our software has a reminder function that people, businesses can set it. Mm. And the success rate of them is quite high if they didn't get the completion the first time around. Mm. But it is completely up to the business and knowing your customers. So mm. if you know that your customers' high-end products tend not to send the reviews, like the reminder email, lower mm. um, value products or experiences tend to do send their reminders out and they seem to get quite a good response rate from the reminders. Um, but you do want to make sure that any software that you use, that it captures them the first time around as most, much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a good example, you can ballpark, um, I can um, let you know for a fact that we get a 35 to 40% completion rate the first time around. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're hitting those the first time so that your reminder is only going to a small proportion anyway of people. Cool. Mm. Second question here. Yep. Um, kia ora. How can I share my Google reviews on my website? Do I copy it manually? <laughs> you can you, yeah, yeah, real good question. You can copy it manually, but it is time consuming and it means that you need to update it all the time and you want to make sure that your um, reviews are as updated as possible. So um, there is ways that you can and put it, embed it on your website. You can find little widgets website widgets or plugins to your WordPress or whatever um, platform your website's built on. There's lots of little plugins um, out there for it. Um, just Review is one of the platforms that allows you to just put a little widget onto your a Google widget onto your website. Um, just just Google Google widgets and it will come up with multiple options for you to be able to put them Ooh. on. Yeah, Thanks and that's so super much. easy. No, that's a good one. Good question. Mm. Um, and another way that you guys are oh, actually going back to that question, and I'm just going to copy it. Um, if you're putting Google reviews, look at other systems that can um, pull in more than just Google reviews. So like, for example, we pull in um, Google and Facebook reviews into, into one place for businesses, as well as their direct reviews as well that they're getting. So you can get um, some that will pull in from other platforms that your specific product, especially um, WooCommerce or um, Shopify, they've got some really cute little widgets that they can plug in and pull in and use on your website and pull in from multiple sources. So there's just more than one. Um, another way that you guys can use your word of mouth and the lady that just asked about um, using her reviews on her website, you can actually use them in um, brochures, newsletters, or leaflets, or some like published uh, material as well. Don't be afraid to take it offline as well and use it in non-digital sense. Um, I think these this is like a lost opportunity that businesses just miss out on you've got the opportunity to even do a case study and use your customers word of mouth in those sort of situations again increase that level of trust by putting an image with them as well so there's lots of things you can actually do with your customer word of mouth to encourage them to and to encourage more people to use your product um, now another way that i'm gonna and this one's always a um uh, it's a very, it could be a whole topic on its own, and I'm sure you might have already done a few topics on this, but I thought I would just cover it um, very briefly as user-generated content. Um, and, and reviews are an example of user-generated content, but there's also images and videos and other way, and uh, images and videos are the other sort of main user-generated content that I'm thinking of here. Um, if you weren't aware, there is 86% um, of millennials use user-generated content as a good indicator of a quality of a brand or service. And then out of, um, I did some further research and I've been, and I've been diving into this, that millennials spend 5.4 hours a day with content generated by their peers. So it's a place that your business just has to be present. Um, and a really good example of this that um, we pulled out from one of the businesses that we work with is Skydive Australia. 
So they have these amazing photos of user-generated content here. They've got their hashtag here, which if you follow it, has actually got a huge amount of followings, um, well, tags or hashes. There's 27,000 followers on the Instagram page alone. Um, so I hosted... So this is just one example of, of them showing their user-generated content. And if you go to them, there's a lot of videos on these social media channels as well that they've used. Um, I also recently hosted a webinar with another tourism business last week who said that they've started using TikTok um, as a channel to create customer word of mouth. Um, it was really early days for them and um, they were just exploring it. And I don't have a lot more information on how they are doing but um, I thought it was a really interesting one and something that I see other businesses getting into as well. Yeah, cool. I actually, we're gonna be doing a session with Andrea Bose um, on TikTok for your business. Oh, so if perfect. you're not familiar with the platform, like I am a beginner, I still don't know what I'm doing, but because the platform is growing so quickly and the age bracket of users is not, it used to be just young people using it, but now businesses are just killing it on there. Um, so I think it's really essential. So we're gonna do a session on that, um, at least one um, that's coming up. Now there's a couple of questions here um, and oh, in addition, I have dropped the previous session that we did with Letitia into the chat under um, everyone. So you should be able to have access to that. A um, couple questions here. What if you don't have your own website but are currently marketing via Facebook page? So if you're marketing via your base Facebook page, some of your social media posts can include your customer customer mm. reviews and testimonials in them. So some of the best ads that I have seen, adverts that I've seen have included customer testimonials in them or that's what the actual ad is and then it's a link through to their, their purchasing or Shopify account yes. so don't be afraid to actually use them for your marketing purposes mm. yeah awesome another question here how do you how do um how do you encourage clients to write give reviews when they aren't super comfortable using social media or digital resources Mm, yeah, that's a good one. So if they're not comfortable using um, digital resources, there is still lots and lots of businesses around that do do the whole paper and pen um, at the end of an experience or service. Um, it's just time consuming. But if you have someone there that can enter it into a system, um, I suggest a system that can then analyze it for you so you don't have to do the analysis as well, um, then you can still do it. Um, a lot of businesses and we had to build the product for a lot of our tourism businesses still, they get verbal um, feedback. Mm. And so if you're a business that you're a reception, you've got receptionists that get told lovely things about, about your service as people leave every day, then capture yeah. it and ask people, oh, is it okay if I use that comment in our, in our marketing or social media? And, and usually people will say yes, but um, you've captured it. And it's so it's about how to make sure that you've got a digital way to capture that so that you're you're keeping it somewhere secure and that you can then spread it and use it in different ways. Yeah. And I guess like also what you said before was if you um, what was brought up before was that maybe they're not on social media, but maybe they've got a phone so you yep. can still use like SMS kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then there's one last question here. It says, how do we find that? Oh, okay. Don't worry. I'll respond to that. Okay. It was just about <laughs> when the TikTok is. I'll let you guys know. So you can okay. check in. Yeah. Sorry about that. That sounds yeah. like a cool one. <laughs> awesome. Good timing. Yeah, it should be good. Oh. Are you all right? Can okay. Turn off my video. <laughs> That's fine. That was user generated content. And I definitely go go and look at that TikTok one. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting where that's heading. And I think it's got some powerful user-generated content in there. Um, another method, me method that we have seen some businesses doing and um, know of businesses doing is that they have been using um, referral systems to boost their word of mouth or their customers' word of mouth. So basically businesses incentivize customers to refer a friend and in return they may both get a, a kickback or one might get a kickback depending on um, how it's set up or you get points or reward system. Um, it's definitely possible to automate these systems. There's a bunch of them, a bunch of them out there. Um, review, re referral candy is one of them. Um, I've got another one here, referral rock, but referral candy is a lot cheaper. Um, and these are systems that can automate this for you and make it a lot easier. Um, be aware though that there is a lot of pros and cons with referral systems. Um, we've got 
uh, we've, we, we work with a lot of businesses actually that refuse to do the referral systems because they feel it goes against the ethos of their business and that they don't really want to give kickbacks to people just for a re referral or a review. But then we've got others that, that do it really well um, and get really good success out of it. So um, be aware that you can do them, but there are pros and cons and it just depends on who your customers are and how you set it up. Um, we know, we heard of a physio that just did it really quietly. So in there, and, I, and I'll go into how you measure it shortly, because um, in their discussion, when they sign people up, they ask people how they heard about, how, how did you hear about us? And if they say friend and family, they then actually record who that person was. And then they, but they do, this is all manual, but they then go and thank that person for the referral. They don't give them any kickback and things. So it's not like a um, payment referrals or points ones like these ones that I'm showing you here, but it was just a, hey, thanks for the referral. Really appreciate it. And they get some really good success from there. And then they actually have learned who their top referrers are, and then they may give a gift to them once a year or something. So there is ways to do that that doesn't have to be manual and that doesn't actually cost you every time that there's a referral because you need to work out what the cost of acquisition is for your customer. And is, is that worth it? Um, because the, yeah, sometimes it's not if you're giving out $10, $10 or $20 per purchase or referral. Um, and then in the end, I just wanted to, to just remind you guys that um, if you have a product or a service that you can create a buzz about, then people will give you reviews and share that experience with their friends and family via word of mouth. It's about creating that buzz. So one of the companies, and I wanted to give you an example, that has done this amazingly well is um, Thomas. So um, if you haven't heard of it, they um, when you buy one pair of shoes from Thomas, one pair is donated to a child in need of shoes. So um, what and what fascinates is their market, or, and what's really interesting is their marketers realized really early on that their slogan, company gives shoes to those in need every time you buy, was way more buzzworthy than if they just use company donates people to poor people, uh, com company donates money to poor people. So it's the wording and how they created that buzz and that flow on effect um, that created their word of mouth marketing for them. So, um, and, and spread the word. So I would say my challenge to you guys is do you have something in your business that is buzzworthy and gets people really excited and wanting to tell others about? And if so, use it to help spread your customer word of mouth. Um, I don't know that, and, and not every company is going to have a product that can do that sort of thing. But I also believe that you guys can create like a smaller buzz um, by using what I what I kind of call and what I think of as social currency, so it's a really it's a really interesting one. But um, basically, what you could do is in a company is offer insider secrets or exclusive information to your members, and when they hear certain words associated with this information, it reminds them about you and your brand, even though they don't actually see your advertising anywhere. Um, a really simple example of this would be imagine that your friend told you you had a special um, happy hour um, deal on Tuesdays at a bar down the corner by your house and on another Tuesday um, when a friend mentions oh should we go and grab a drink after work it actually triggers something um, to for you to remember oh Tuesdays special deal and it becomes a trigger and actually a special deal. There's a, there's a bar down the corner that's got a deal on. Um, so it actually triggers like an effect in your head that's like, oh, yeah, that's right. And you've actually had to have no marketing for it. It's been this word of mouth exclusive kind of social currency that people kind of spread around quietly to one another. I'm sure you can all think of examples of like, and discount codes are a little bit the same where you're like, oh, um, just go and use this discount code, but really quietly, like in this exclusive sort of way. So creating a little bit of buzz, um, there's two sort of ways that you can do that and to help amplify your customer word of mouth. Um, so I just wanted to recap, uh, and if there's any other questions, throw them out before I go into the measurement of it, but basically showcase your reviews and testimonials on your website um, and, and, and do them more than just in one place. Use them really well all over the place where you know that people are maybe questioning your sales funnel and need that little bit of push.
for that to, to get them over the line. Um, use reviews and testimonials on other marketing assets that you create. And so and a fine example would be someone that just said they've got a Facebook page. Then use them on your Facebook page. Don't be shy to like, like New Zealanders are quite um, humble sometimes and we don't like to sing our own praises, but you should. Um, encourage you to generate a content. Um, I highly recommend this. Um, there's all the social media channels. There's the images, the um, videos, and then, yeah, definitely tune into that TikTok um, tutorial that's going to be happening. Referral programs. So consider if, if this is something that you can afford because your customer, like the, the cost of acquisition won't be too high, then definitely go and have a look at it and how you can use those to spread the word quietly and amplify your word of mouth. And then just remember, guys, create a buzz about your product or business. Um, big or small, there'll be some sort of unique selling point that you can you can do it. And it might be just how you spin your spin your tail that um, in your story that actually sells it. Um, so this is all good and dandy, amplifying your customers' word of mouth. But um, I believe that unless you can measure how effective it is, is it worth your time to do it? And and is it working? So you could be doing all these things and it actually not working. So you need to be able to measure it. Um, so, so how do you measure your word of mouth? And there's a couple of ways that I'm just going to touch on today. Um, and, and it's just a way for you to be able to know where to go and what to keep an eye on if you're going to implement some of these things. So the first one that I'm going to touch on is, is asking and how you ask, when you ask. Another measurement that businesses use is NPS. And then another one is actually reviews and review tracking and reputation management and how you can actually go about doing that. So um, one of the best measures of how well your word of mouth is going is to ask people, where did you hear about us? It sounds so simple, but there, um, but it, it, it's so many businesses, just you should just be doing it to find out what's actually working. Um, there's usually two key times that you can ask this question, either at the start of your experience or interaction with your customers. So when someone's signing in or you're selling them something for the first time or at the end of the experience or transaction. Um, so, for example, in the tourism space, many operators require travelers to complete a waiver before undertaking their activity. So during this waiver sign in process, they add in an additional question. How did you hear about us? So if you've got a sign in process for any any sort of product or service that you do, can, you can consider adding it then. Um, other tour operators um, that we work with actually do it the other way around and ask the travelers after they have done the experience and they send them a customer survey and it's part of the customer survey um, that they fill in. They ask, how did you hear about us? Um, a lawyers that we work with to ask the question during the customer survey at the end of their experience with the practice. And it just comes down to knowing your customers and when is the best time to ask. Um, and once you've gathered this information, you can start to see very quickly. So if you look on the, I've just shared here, uh, a breakdown of what it is, you can start to see very quickly um, if it is actually working. And so, for example, and, it, and it's a way to actually track other things that you might not be able to do. So radio ads is a really um, interesting way that people often can't figure out if they're worth it or not. Um, another one is the yellow pages and is it worth it or not? But by si simply asking and putting it as an option for people to choose, you can start tracking if it's actually worth it or not. And is it getting you leads? Um, so there are, I've shown you an example of a customer survey here on the left, which is, um, a yonder one that our businesses send out. And then there is ways that you can, so this is an automated one, and then look for systems that can then um, analyze the information for you as well. So for example, this is a lawyer's um, analysis here on the right um, from, uh, from yonder. And it's again, it's real time. It gives them immediate results from what people are saying. And it goes to show that the Google search for this business is, is by far the most important, but word of mouth is getting recommendations. So it's just one way for you to measure it is by asking, but having the technology in place to be able to analyze it and get the information out of it very quickly. Um, another way that you can measure your word of mouth marketing, and th these are by far, like we know most businesses that we work with use a combination of all these three. So I'm not saying that you should just use one or the other. Um, often it's a way that you use all of them, but it is via a net promoter score or um, NPS. 
Um, MPS is a customer loyalty and customer satisfaction survey. It is not an exact measurement of your word of mouth advertising, but many businesses use it um, as an indicator based on how many promoters they have. And these are the customers that will basically fuel your business's word of mouth strategy, your promoters. So to gather an MPS um, to, or to do an MPS, a business just asks one simple question. So again, it's really simple. And it is, how likely are you to recommend us? Um, for this one, they've added to, uh, to your friends and family. Um, so as you can see, it's super simple and it's just a matter of someone clicking uh, zero to 10 for that, which I think is exactly the sort of um, survey that the person that talked to us earlier around the vets one had by the sounds of it. And then the customer chooses a number and then most businesses follow up with a question, can you explain why you gave us this score? Um, so that is your basic MPS um, example of gathering it. So promoters are people that will amplify, that help amplify your word of mouth and they usually score you a nine or a 10. Passives are customers that scored you a seven or eight and detractors are everyone six and below. And then your MPS is your number that's worked out by going the percentage of promoters minus the percentage of detractors. And generally, um, if your in net promoter score is 70 or above, you are giving outstanding, you've got out, outstanding customer loyalty and satisfaction. Um, to give you an indication, um, telecommunication businesses, for example, sit in the negatives. So um, have, has, if anyone has heard of anyone saying something nice about their telecommunication um, company, then, then you're probably in the minority because most people um, don't rate them very highly. Um, but in terms of, uh, and each industry has got their own sort of standard on what they do with that. So for example, um, you can get an NPS of 72. That's amazing. And then if you know your industry average, you can actually start saying, well, that's, that's amazing. I'm sitting here in my industry standard. And then you'll know, and it will give you a really good indication of how many people are out there promoting you in the, in the wider, wider scheme of things. Yep. So two questions here. Um, oh. One was, could you give that formula again? Oh, yep. So MPS is percentage of promoters minus percentage of detractors. Yeah. And so those promoters, as you remember, she said was what, seven and above? Promoters yeah. are nine and 10 and okay. detractors are six and below. Six and below. And passives. Yep. Okay. Yep. I kind of, yeah, the, the passives sit in the middle. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then um, the second question here, uh, it says, we've just got business buzz in the week. Um, how do I keep the high going a bit longer? Taranaki based business. I'm oh, not yeah. sure what business buzz in the week is. So I, I'm not she's really created like a real excitement. Is that what she's sort of referring to? Yeah, maybe? maybe just could you elaborate on that just a touch? Cause I'm, I'm not sure if that's like a thing that you subscribe to or, you know, or if it's yeah. just, you know, a feeling or yeah. 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 Cool. We'll just wait for that to come through. Yeah, no, that's ahead. cool. Um, share, like getting, gathering more of it or trying to get more, if people are sharing things with you, then how do you then show that and escalate that on your own social media? Okay, so they've won an award. That's what I'm, oh, they've won an award, cool. So they've won an award. How do I keep the high going a bit longer? Get people to share why you, why you got their award. Get people to congratulate you. Yeah, definitely have like yeah. your socials and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Pictures from when you receive the award and yeah you know, wherever you're going to put that like that then, could be a page on your website as well where you're featured you know yeah mm. make sure you update your google my business account with the picture and image of the award on it mm. so yeah. it's just yeah yep yeah that's a really yeah. great congratulations by the way yeah that's exciting uh, where are we up to? Oh, so that's just a measurement another measurement and how you can track your word of mouth um, success and how it's going and then reviews. So a third way that I know a lot of businesses keep tabs on their word of mouth marketing is by checking their online review sites, which we've touched on a couple of times this time, this, this time around. Um, so these do give you an indication of what people love and, and hate about your product or service or experience, um, depending what industry you're in. But um, I just want to give you a note of caution is that 
They are only uh, reviews on external websites alone are usually only a snapshot of a very small percentage of your customers. And so to get a really good understanding, we do, I do highly recommend that you get a bigger snapshot of your customer data because often um, reviews can be quite polarizing. Either they love you or they hate you. Um, but then there's all this information that you're missing. Our, our data shows that only between one to 2% of people actually review you online unless you've asked for them or you've actually done something to promote them to review you. So that's a very small percentage of your, um, of your reviews. And if you are using your reviews, and I, and I do recommend you do to find out um, what people are saying and what the word of mouth is and sort of monitoring it, make sure that you are automating it as much as possible. So there is lots of um, reputation management tools out there that can help you to pick up. Um, this is an example of what you can do when you can pick up positive and negative words within your reviews. You can start filtering to your products. So you can start getting really granular with what people are saying about your business. And um, this like I know lots of people and I think right at the start I said some people um, we've got lots of businesses that have ditched their spreadsheets because this is what they were doing they were going on to all their different review sites um, picking it all out and then analyzing it but there's faster ways to do that guys so um, if you and if you go on to if you use WooCommerce or Shopify go on to their integrations page and you will and search reviews and they will come up with some review management options for you if you're in the tourism um, professional or um, personal services space then somewhere like Yonder is a really really good option for you guys um, and does it all for you as well so it's about finding the right technology for the type of business you are that will automate this process for you um, because they're full of knowledge reviews are a great way to know if your word of mouth is working but it's just making sure that you're keeping a tab on it and again I'm going to go back to what um, Anna Mari said earlier about answering them um, showing you um, if you can answer your reviews and answer both good and bad, it's really, really good. And it shows people what your business is actually like. So that is, yeah, I'm on time today. Um, that, the, I'm kind of coming to the end of it where um, customer, and I just wanted to really sum up really, is that customer word of mouth is one of the cheapest and most trustworthy marketing that you can do as a business. But I, and and I just I'm really passionate about it, but I think that you guys still need to. I'm going to go back to my last point, which is you need to measure it to make sure that it is working for you. And if it's not, then put in some place things that can amplify it, and then measure them, and then find out what's working for you, and then do more of that to amplify it. Um, and then definitely create a buzz around your product. So well done to that lady that won an award. Um, mm. That's awesome. But it's like encourage your users and your your uh, yeah your users and customers to share that with others of them so it's not just you sharing it but it's there it's them as well mm. uh, such great insight in today's session um i will pop in the chat the the web address to yonder so you can get in touch if you would like to um i i think sometimes uh, we know these things but don't know where to put them or you know, don't know um, how often we can do it or, you know, what we're supposed to do with it once we have it, you know, yep. so, um, yep. so this has been a really great deep dive into this oh. topic. And I think it was super useful. And I just appreciate your time coming out today and um, sharing your knowledge. Always such a great session. Um, we're kind of, I think you've covered all of our bases with our questions. So we're quite good in that awesome. respect. So if you're waiting for that website link, just, um, yeah, I'll once we say goodbye, then I'll drop that in the chat because I'll have to go find it for you. So uh, and um, don't be, don't be shy to just contact me if you've got a few questions and, and just want to clarify, like, as you say, Edmar, there's so many people that ask just like that question around how many reminders do I send or, um, yeah. We get asked a lot, when do I ask for a review and, yeah. and when's the best time or where's the best place to put a review on my website? It all comes down to industry specific um, and, and, and sort of where what your business is and who your customers are. Hmm. Yeah. So I felt like I kind of skimmed over a little bit of that because 
Uh, there's so many different customers on here that or industries. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just so <laughs> many comments coming in, just like thank you. Oops, a, a wonderful session. Um, couldn't write fast enough. <laughs> Excellent <Excellent-ness. laughs> And we'll integrate it into my customer journey map. Well, we would love to even just see what you've been doing, Lara, on your business. Um, yeah. please contact support. Let us see. We want to, we want to know how all this stuff really helps your business. Mm-hmm. Thanks for a great talk. I'll use those reviews um, that have been sitting unused since last year i'm a typical <laughs> shy kiwi yeah don't be yeah, shy don't be shy out there. like sing your praises because oh yeah i just think we're too way too yeah humble we we don't it is like that isn't it yeah, yeah. and another just thank you have a fab day you too have a wonderful day kakite everyone and i will see you tomorrow you are very welcome lindy thanks for another very informative session thank you Oh, look at all your wonderful reviews you're getting here, Letitia. Should, oh. um, yeah. You should use them. <laughs> you should use them, Letitia. Um, yeah. Oh, you guys could use them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. definitely. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. I think, what do we have going on tomorrow? I'm not even sure. Um, eek, nothing's working fast enough. <laughs> Well, we'll find out. It'll be a surprise if you're looking for if you're looking for the information about what's happening tomorrow. I'm just jump waiting, on the website. I'm <laughs> just waiting for your website. TikTok information. Yeah, actually, Andrea Bozzi, he's actually coming on this week, and I just can't oh. remember if it's tomorrow or not. And he's going to be talking about how to create video um, marketing videos for your marketing uh, on your phone. So it's going to be really cool because I think that's quite accessible for us. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Awesome user-generated content. Thanks for having me. Kakite. See you. If you've got questions.